All right, guys. Happy Halloween. Um, <laughs> I guess we should go ahead and say what we're supposed to be, because I don't think anybody would know what I'm supposed to be. I'm a zombie, bitch. <laughs> and I'm supposed to be Brooke from the Manga One Piece. I have my cane <laughs> sword here. It's got to take a little bit of time to unscrew it. Pretty cool, right? So... <laughs> Yeah, I'm supposed to be Brooke, and this is our review of Paranormal Activity 4. Ooh. So we just went and saw this movie. Um, actually, I guess we saw it yesterday, but... Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to rank this movie compared to the others. I mean, I, I like the franchise. I know a lot of people hate the Paranormal series for whatever reason, but and I know a lot of people hated Saw. But I look forward to the movies that come out every single year like Saul did. And now Paranormal Activity kind of took its place as far as the every year at Halloween we get a new horror movie. Yeah, I have never really been a big fan of Paranormal Activity. Just because I don't think that they're that scary, um, personally. I mean, the thought behind it with the, the big D word going on, that's a little, little scary. But... Um, I don't know. I but I have to say this one I liked better than the others, and I know there's some uh, conflicting opinions about that. But my opinion, better than the others. <laughs> For me personally, I actually thought the other movies were scarier, just because when I saw the first one in theaters and I came home after watching it, I, when I left the theater, I was like, that wasn't anything. It was wasn't scary at all. But then once you get alone and you start to think about the premise of the first movie it really does start to creep you out at least for me right. and I felt the same way after the second one mm, a little bit of it in the third and this one didn't do anything to me I just wasn't creeped out at all yeah the, I just don't find the creepy factor in any of them personally like I was saying but I get what you were saying about the premise thinking about it and everything I totally yeah. get that but I don't think personally that any of them scared me or frightened me later at all <laughs> yeah it's um i mean different things scare different people yeah so it's kind of one of those movies like some people are really creeped out by zombie movies for whatever reason and some people are really scared of exorcist type movies or haunted house type movies yeah. and the whole possession theme thing always really creeped me out and this movie just kind of went crazy it got really goofy and didn't make a lot of sense and I think goofy. that's one reason it just didn't really work for me um, it's not necessarily a bad movie like I enjoyed watching it and it had an interesting story but it was just kind of as far as the timeline goes it doesn't really make sense because it starts off and it shows uh, Katie yeah and Hunter when she took the child from the second movie and for some reason there's like another child in this movie. Some random kid, and you have no idea. Did you think that, okay, this little kid's Hunter, right? Wrong. It makes no sense, really. I mean, uh, we were talking about it, and, and uh, he suggested that um, it was just like some kind of demon child. You know what I mean? Um, which can be the only logical explanation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the movie starts off and we see the family who's going to be haunted. And it's like this girl, her little brother Wyatt, and her parents. And her boyfriend, who's a good character in this movie. Yeah. Actually, I thought all the people did a great job. Especially the kid, Robbie, who played the little Dude, devil boy. Creepy. That kid was awesome, man. He was, he was, was so funny. Kid. Well, there's one line he says to the boyfriend... He doesn't like you very much. And it was really funny, but um, yeah, I thought that kid was great in this movie. And just... Robbie is this kid that lives next door. And his mom is Katie. And she's sick, so he's got to come stay with the family for a little while. And that's when all the crazy stuff starts happening. And another thing about this movie is... You know how in the third movie, there was that scene where the girl walks into the Invisible Man and it pulls her up by her hair and you also have like the ghost dragging the girl down the stairs in the second movie and, yeah. and the first one it's like pulling her down the hall nothing like that happened in this movie that was also kind of disappointing yeah it was kind of like one, at one point he like levitated the girl off the bed and that was like okay 
Yeah. You know, what? Okay. <laughs> I mean, at first, I thought he was gonna kill her, like lift her and yeah. break her back or something, but nothing happened. Which that would have been pretty neat. I mean, that would have been a good idea. Yeah. So it was just kind of like a strange, a strange entry into this series. But anyways, back to the actual movie. Um. So this boy Robbie comes to live with them for a little while, and creepy things start to happen. Um. But yeah, we come to find out that he is trying to, I guess, get Wyatt to become possessed. Yes. And Wyatt starts to say his name is Hunter. That's his real name. And he was adopted. And his sister says, what are you talking about? Your name is Wyatt. So but he if, is adopted. Yeah, so if he's supposed to be Hunter, then who the hell is Robbie? Yeah, where the hell did Robbie come from? So I don't know if Robbie is supposed to be like a demon ghost child thing yeah. that's supposed to just like trick him but eventually all hell breaks loose there was a few weird scenes people showing up at the neighbor's house and yeah which really they did never really explain that like it really just didn't make any sense yeah there was a scene where a knife floats to the ceiling disappears and then it falls back later but it's it, like thunk it, apparently it's up there for a while though yeah I guess it's just floating up there waiting for someone. <laughs> you know one thing I do like about this series is it doesn't go crazy with gore. Yeah. In fact, it never does. Um, when the knife fell, I thought for sure the mom was going to cut her hand while she was cooking with it. Or when it fell, I thought it was going to land on the dad's hand or head or something like that. And it didn't. No. And then I remember a scene, I believe, in the third movie where the girl is messing with the garbage disposal. And I was thinking yeah. it's going to come on, but it didn't. And that's one thing about this series. It just it never really goes into gory territory. They tease and I actually you with like it, that. though. Yeah, they tease you with it, but you don't get any of that blood and gore. And really, it's unnecessary. It's kind of refreshing, really, you yeah. know, to not have to see that all the time in all these horror movies. Yeah, I agree. I think for paranormal activity, you really don't need that. It's not necessary. The fear is from the unknown because you don't never really see what Toby looks like. And they did a cool scene with the Xbox Connect where it yeah. shows the tracking dots all over and then you could see like these invisible figures. Yeah. And I guess the little child was supposed to be Robbie. Yeah, I guess so. It doesn't really make it, it doesn't really tell you, but like well Robbie and White are in there and you, then you see this other like figure of a child. It's like a child's figure and it stands up and you can see it through the dots. And yeah. that's how you're able to see him, but it doesn't really explain who that is unless it is Toby. I guess so. I don't really know, and I don't really care. But the movie itself was actually pretty good. Um, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're a huge fan of the series. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's not a bad movie. I just can't recommend watching this one in theaters by any means. No, I would wait for it to come out on DVD. Like, you don't need to go pay that much to see it in the theater because you're really not getting anything extra. And, yeah. well, weird stuff, like, um, at the end of the movie... Um, oh, yeah. There's, like, a weird clip at the very end. You have to sit through all the credits. And at the very end, there's, like, they this handheld camera view going into a Spanish store. And then all you hear them say is, Santaria. And they, I have no idea what the hell this was. Yeah, there's just, like, like, a voodoo place. I have no idea. I don't know what it meant. I'm not sure anyone ever could know what that means. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with the next one. Yeah, it just it didn't really make sense, and I was thinking, okay, does this mean the next movie's going to be like with a Spanish theme, right. like a Spanish ghost or something? But yeah, which, which I have. Which would be interesting, though. As far as like, I knew there was something after the credits. Um, but I, so I waited, and when it showed this, I just was kind of like, what the hell? It didn't make sense. And I also want to mention that the end of the movie. Um, I guess I'll have to put spoilers in the description or something because we are giving a lot away here. Yeah. Uh, the end of the movie, the girl, the sister, goes to the neighbor's house because she's trying to get Wyatt. Her father is taken over there and she sees him getting dragged, uh, dragged around and thrown against walls and stuff. And then she runs outside and... Yeah. Or actually, before she runs outside, she goes into the bedroom and Katie charges after her with like the demon face and yeah. busts through the door. That was badass. That was. That was pretty cool. Her face is crazy looking like sh they did a good job with effects. Like yeah. it was creepy. And um, yeah, she busts through the door and you see her face in there like Ugh. and uh, so yeah, the girl gets out the window 
and um, you see all of these women witches pretty much I mean I guess they're part of the <laughs> I don't get that part well this is what I think I think they're part of the covenant because they all have the circle and the um, triangle shape pendant necklace on yeah I guess that makes sense and they're all kind of possessed looking and they're just they come after her and they get her but there was like a hundred of them yeah there was like a hundred which makes no sense it was like where did all these people come from like, it was it, too much it was like a whole town of people like <laughs> yeah and she turns around and she sees them all and then she turns back and Katie charges and the camera gets destroyed and the movie ends and then after the credits you see a weird Spanish store. I don't know. Funny thing though, there was a um, lady that I guess came in. Oh yeah. yeah. She like walks in to watch the end of the movie and <laughs> she yells out when this is happening. Like when you see Katie's face, she's like... The demons are real, and they're coming out tomorrow. <laughs> like, it was hilarious, yeah, really. it was very funny, because <laughs> at first I was like, what the hell, was that part of the movie? Because it was just us and, like, three other people in the entire theater. Yeah. Which was awesome. And so at the very end of the movie, this lady just wandered into the theater, and I guess watched, I don't know how much she watched. Yeah. But saw the end with Katie turning into the demon and attacking the camera, and she just said, demons is real. Demons is real. And, and they're, they're coming, coming out tomorrow. Out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then she left. It was funny, though. And I was just, I was laughing my ass off at that. But yeah, at first I was like, is this part of the movie? <laughs> and then I realized there's absolutely no way. Um, so yeah, that was a funny thing that happened in the theater, but... yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's our review of Paranormal Activity 4. Hope you guys liked this video. Leave your thoughts on this movie in the comments below, and thanks for watching.